Hi, and uh, welcome to our first screencast for the first unit in the Cells and Systems unit. Uh, this unit is going to focus on uh, the different parts of the cell. Uh, the basic unit of life is going to focus on the different characteristics of living things, uh, structure and function, osmosis and diffusion, as well as uh, the human body and five specific uh, systems within the human body. So uh, let's not waste any time. Let's just hop right into the first part, which is uh, the difference between living and non-living things. And a lot of this part you probably would have reviewed uh, in some previous year. Uh, I know in grade seven uh, that we talk about that when we t discuss um, uh, ecosystems, uh, but it's always a good review and refresher to talk about living and non-living. Uh, now, I don't need to go into the difference between abiotic and biotic factors or living and non-living because I'm sure that you know, but there are a set of criteria that scientists uh, will select when we're discussing about living things. Uh, everyone can agree that most living things will do things like breathe or move or sleep or eat, uh, but scientists have sat down together and collaborated and said, well, actually, there are six main things that every living thing on this earth uh, will do. And those six things are as follows. First one. One, everything is made up of cells. If it's alive, it's made up of cells, and we call cells the basic unit of life. And they can be found, like I said, in all living things. Within our human body, two examples might be red blood cells, as pictured on the left there, or a neuron, a brain neuron, pictured on the right. Okay, Each individual cells, each cell having a very, what we call, specialized function. And we'll get more into that later on in this unit. Okay, uh, it's Characteristic number two. Living organisms require energy to maintain life. Now, we gain our energy from a food and nutrients, whatever we consume. Some animals uh, or organisms will gain their uh, energy from sunlight or from plants. Okay, So energy is what we gain from the environment. And every living thing gets its food from different resources. Okay, The cubs here are feeding from mum. That's how they are fed first, and then they begin to fend for themselves. Characteristic number three. Living things respond to the environment. Okay? Things don't just sit in a daze. If I were to walk behind you and blow up a balloon without you knowing and pop it, you would certainly respond to that. Okay? You jumping up and screaming and possibly a, a shrieking would be what we call a response. Okay? Me popping the balloon is something that happens in the environment, and we call that something a stimulus. The way you respond, a shriek, a run, a yell, a a smack, whatever. Some people will, will smack someone and that scares them. Okay, That's called a response. Okay, So we always have a stimulus and a response. Every living thing does respond to something in the environment. Characteristic number four, living things grow and develop. Now organisms have the ability to replace some cells that are worn out or damaged, such as your skin cells, for example. You have the uh, ability to replace them uh, if they're damaged. As organisms grow and develop, their body shape and size can change. You are perfect evidence of this. Nobody on this planet looks the same when they did five, seven, ten years ago, maybe even six months ago. This is called development. Okay? For example, there's my two little dogs when they were first coming home on the top left there, Molly and Copper, Copper being the darker color one, and then closer to, to now what they look like on the right there, much larger, much more dog figure, although I do wish they would have stayed as puppies. That would have been, I think, I think awesome. Characteristic number five, all living things reproduce. Reproduction, however, is not necessary for survival, but is necessary for survival of the species. Uh, parents don't have to, uh, or sorry, adults don't have to reach the age of 40 uh, by having kids first. They can reach the age of 60 and live a full life without any kids, but it is the uh, survival of the species where some of, some of the species has to reproduce. So here's some images again of, of parents in the wild. And lastly, living things adapt to their environment. Okay, organisms adapt to their environment for survival. So they'll do something, it's usually a physical or behavioral change, that'll increase their chance for survival. For example, we have the snowshoe hair on the left there. In the wintertime, it turns white, sheds its brown fur, able to hide better in the snow. And in the summertime, it sheds its white fur and turns back to brown. On the top there, we have a, a leopard. I believe it's a leopard. It could be a cheetah. I think, no, I think it's a leopard. And uh, these animals uh, have spots on them so that they camouflage in well with their surroundings. Uh, they may look obvious to you because you can see them 
you know, they're, they're, they're kind of brown, they're sticking out in the green, uh, but to whatever animal they're hunting, they may not appear as colored as they appear to us. So they probably hide very well. And on the bottom picture there, we have the peppered moth, uh, and the peppered moth and its cousin, so to speak, uh, on the bottom part of the tree there. And one is, has adapted to blend in with the tree bark, and the other clearly sticks out and is probably eaten in those environments. So again, the six characteristics of all living things, one, made up of cells, two, they need energy. Three, they grow and develop. Four, they respond to the environment. Five, they reproduce. And six, they adapt. That's easy. And that's the first screencast of the unit.